Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori. If you are new here, I am a family nurse practitioner and today's video is episode two in the lab series interpretation that I am currently doing on my channel. I did the first episode last week where I talk all about the metabolic panel, the CMP versus the BMP and how you want to look at your patient's labs when you are treating them. Now, lab interpretation is lab interpretation. No matter where your patient population population is. However, because I care for patients mostly in a nursing home setting and a nursing home is limited in some of the things that they can do. That's the reason why I kept referencing that in a nursing home setting, this is what I would do. And then if anything critical comes along, I definitely will have to send the patient out to the hospital. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. So today we're going to talk about CBC. We're going to do CBC with differential versus CBC without differential. So CBC is your complete blood count. So in my first series where I talked about the metabolic panel, I kept saying in that video that you really want to look at trends on your patient. And I'm going to say that a lot again in this video. I'm really sorry, but that is quite important when you are looking at your patient's lab value. Trends matter a lot. CBC, your complete blood count, you can either order a CBC with differential and a CBC without, without differential. I am going to put on the screen what you get when you order CBC with differential and what you get when you order CBC without differential. Your CBC without differential, you get your WBC, your RBC, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit, your MCV, your MCH, your MCHC, RDW, and your platelets. Now, when you get CBC with differential, you get all that, plus you are getting your neutrophil, your lymphocytes, your monocytes, your eosinophil, your basophil, your immature granulocytes. And these are important when you kind of want to look at what type of infection a patient has. When you look at your CBC with differential, so the monocytes and your lymphocytes, those are the things that you normally see elevated if it's a viral infection. So if the patient has some, have TB or mono, those um, show increase. If you see an increase in your neutrophils, your bands and your SEGs, those pretty much are more indicative of a bacterial infection. And then your eosinophils are normally some form of allergic type reaction. If you get your CBC and the WBC is elevated, then I want to look at these other things to see, you know, which one of these are showing an elevation. So if I order a CBC on my patient and the white blood cell is elevated, three reasons why your patient's WBC could be elevated. Number one, infection. Number two, steroids. And number three, it could be some event or even cancer. In the nursing home setting, two of the most common infection that patients get is either pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia, or a urinary tract infection. So once I see that WBC kind of trending upwards, I will go ahead and order a chest x-ray to rule out pneumonia. And you also want to get yourself a urine analysis and culture, so UACNS. If you guys want me to do a separate video about urinalysis and urine culture, let me know in the comments and I will do that. I will tell you guys, is that when you order your CBC on your patients, and like I said, you're checking your trends. I had a patient once who CBC just looked crazy. When I say crazy, I mean the WBC was very elevated and her platelets were very low. We're going to talk about platelets in a minute. And I was very concerned about this patient and I wanted this patient to go to the hospital because it was just, she never, this was never her lab values of me caring for her in eight months in which I knew this lady. When it comes on to your hemoglobin and your hematocrit, shows you if your patient is anemic. And one of the most common anemia that we see in a lot of our patients in the nursing home setting is iron deficiency anemia. Now, if you want to really diagnose your patient with anemia, 
you really want to look at RBC, your hemoglobin, and your hematocrit. If all three of those is low, your patient have some form of anemia. Now, a patient can be iron deficiency anemia. They can have anemia of chronic disease. A lot of our patients in the nursing home setting actually do have anemia of chronic disease, but one of the most common ones that we see is iron deficiency anemia, and it's caused from some form of blood loss. And in a nursing home setting, what can we not do? We cannot infuse blood products in a nursing home setting. So once you get these lab values back and you see these trends going down, don't wait for the patient's hemoglobin to hit six and then say, okay, let's send the patient out to the hospital. Like you kind of want to be proactive before it gets to that point. What I normally do when I run the labs on my patients, if I notice that the hemoglobin is dropping every time I order lab, I automatically put the patient on ferrous sulfate. So ferrous sulfate is iron supplement and I put them on ferrous sulfate 325 milligram at least twice a day to help with that replacement because I don't want the hemoglobin to continue to drop. And when you add ferrous sulfate to your patient, one of the big things that's going to happen, they're going to have some GI issues, which is going to be constipation. So you need to also put them on some form of stool softener. You would put your patient on your ferrous sulfate for at least four to six weeks and recheck these lab values to see if it is increasing. And it normally will show you some slight increase in your hemo hemoglobin it's still dropping the patient needs to go to the hospital because now something else is going on and we need to figure out what is going on and potentially the patient needs a blood transfusion so let's now talk about your platelet count if the platelet count keep going down all the time and it goes down all the time you look at your patient's lab you want to look to see why are why is the platelets going down sometimes you can have heparin induced thrombocytopenia, low platelets is thrombocytopenia. So you want to go ahead and stop the patient heparin. Like the patient that I was telling you guys about, this patient actually, when I transferred the patient to the hospital, the patient was diagnosed with leukemia. Her platelet count was extremely depleted. So a couple of things that you should look for when platelet counts are dropping like that. Like I said, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, lupus can make your platelet count low, leukemia, and also recent infection can make the platelet count drop a little, but it shouldn't be so significant that you're wondering what is going on with my patient. They treat them with like prednisone four to six weeks, but I typically do not manage this in a nursing home setting. If I see the platelet counts going crazy down, that patient is going to be transferred to the hospital because we need to figure out what else is kind of going on with the patient. Just a reminder, you will see these purplish dots on the lower legs on the patient called petechiae. So if you go and you assess your patient and you see those on the feet on the lower legs, you need to go ahead and draw you a CBC to check what the platelet count is because that is indicative of low platelet count. So that is my quick review for you guys on looking at your patient's CBC, CBC with diff versus CBC without differential. These videos are really just refreshers for you because a lot of you guys who watch these videos are NP students or nurse practitioners and you kind of want a refresher. I don't want to waste your time and go over what is normal lab value because by this time you already know that a say potassium of two is critically low or a potassium of six is critically high so I don't want to waste your time with that let me know in the comments if you have any questions I hope that you learned something from this quick fire video as always I thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll definitely catch you guys up on my next one bye guys